thriller. Like maybe they think they're cool, but this phone's not great.
An awkward silence falls over the room. everybody doing this afternoon this evening good to see you here and uh, for those of you joining us online um, forgive me if there's uh, some buffering going on this uh, our internet here at the church is not very fast and so when it bogs down it's really not very fast all right and so 
it's kind of given us a little bit of fits today as far as uh, just being reliable. I don't know why, but sometimes that's how it goes. So apologize in advance for that. And uh, uh, who knows, right now I, I may sound like, I don't know, but uh, that's, and you probably maybe didn't catch any of that. I don't know. So, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, those of us who are here will have a good time. Let's all stand. And I hope if you're online, hopefully you can catch it. Maybe try Facebook if YouTube's not working or vice versa. And uh, see if that works out a little bit better for you. And turn to page number 157 tonight. 157. Let me find it here. The way of the cross leads home. I must needs. Sing it out. Here we go. I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way but this. I shall ne'er get sight of the gates of light if the way of the cross I miss. The way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as I onward go. The way of the cross leads home. I must needs go on in the blood-sprinkled way, the path that the Savior trod. If I ever climb to the heights of life, where the soul is at home with God, the way of the cross leads home, the way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as I onward go, the way of the cross leads on the last. Then I bid farewell to the way of the world, to walk in it nevermore. For my Lord says, come and I seek my home, where he waits at the open door. Lift it up. The way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as I onward go. The way of the cross leads home. Amen, amen. It's good to see you out tonight. And uh, we'll see if we can't sing in a couple more. But we got several folks uh, that have had some exposures here and there at work, around friends, things like that. And uh, so quarantining, that kind of thing. So uh, pray for those. Pray for, as of right now, we don't have any active cases in our church. Uh, everybody's uh, doing well. And uh, But, it, you know, with this COVID thing, that's turning into like secondary and thirdly and fourthly exposures. Well, I was exposed to a person who was exposed to a person who was exposed to a person that tested positive, you know. <laughs> and uh, it's like, man, it's hard to keep up with it all. So anyway, uh, so pray for all those and pray for all those that are uh, watching from home. I hope that you'll uh, get a blessing tonight from the service. Let's open in a word of prayer. Brother Hunter, open us in prayer, please, sir. Heavenly hey, Father, Lord, we thank you so much for being in your house tonight, Lord. We ask that you would meet with us, prepare our hearts for what you have for us, Lord. Speak from us from your word, Lord. Uh, uh, be with uh, the, this church, Lord, and bless them in a special way. And we'll thank you Amen. and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And uh, once again, uh, we're a little over $2,000 on our way to our foundation offering goal of $76.90. Uh, 7690 is left out of the 9690. So little, roughly, it's give or take 2000. Uh, it was right around that. So pray that that'll come in. And next week is our official day for the big offering. And so just ask God to really open the floodgates. And uh, 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 it all, nothing ever gets done for the Lord without sacrifice. All right? Uh, nothing ever gets done. You look in the Bible, nothing ever takes place for the Lord without sacrifice by God's people. Uh, time, talent, and treasure, all right, and uh, giving of those things. So just pray that that'll uh, take place. Also, just to reiterate, uh, I almost kept the black plastic up, all right? I was tempted to, just so that it, it would not be so tempting, all right? I know that everybody walks by going, oh, man, it's done. Uh, we still got a few things left to do, all right? And so uh, not the least of which is our sound system, of course. I know that we had uh, folks going, hey, why aren't we in there today? And so... Uh, uh, that's why, all right? So we, we are uh, still wanting to wrap up a few. There's, there's some things that we want to get done, 
uh, before we just go jumping in there for services, okay? And so, uh, so bear with us while we uh, wrap those up. Brother CJ, Brother Hunter will be leaving this Thursday, all right? So you, if you want a chance to sneak in uh, 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 a long-distance wave, do it. Yeah. <laughs> that's all you're allowed to do, at least while this camera's going, all right? So no joking. All right, so, uh, uh, but anyway, just, uh, just uh, uh, after they go, we will probably have a work day uh, here in the near future, gentlemen, uh, for us to continue to knock out some of these little uh, side uh, things that need to get done that we'd like to see done before we get in. Uh, uh, the finances of it all are definitely uh, a big part of that too. So we have to pray that the Lord will provide uh, in the offering next week to be able to wrap up some of the things. And so uh, if we don't meet our goal next week, we're just going to have to say, Lord, bring it in week by week until we get there. And so uh, uh, we do have a couple outstanding balances we need to pay off that we need this offering for, for, for sure. So pray about that if you would. Uh, and uh, we know that the Lord will provide. All right. But I'm excited. I uh, hope you are too. I'm sure I'm pleased with how it's turned out. And uh, uh, it's uh, exactly how we envisioned it for the most part. Um, and uh, so that's a blessing to see God bring uh, the vision that he's laid on our hearts to fruition. It's a, it's a huge thing. I hope it excites you as well. And we're praying that the Lord will use our new auditorium and uh, to show the world that we want to give the Lord our best. And uh, as they come in, we're praying many people will get saved on, those, on that altar in there. And uh, many lives will be changed, and many marriages will be saved, and many homes will be salvaged. And uh, just ask the Lord to uh, use it in a wonderful way and uh, uh, excited about it. Let's stand again. 249. 249 in your, uh, in your hymnal. The Comforter has come. Let's sing the first and the last. Oh, spread the tidings round. Sing it out. Here we go. Oh, spread the tidings round, wherever man is found, wherever human hearts and human woes abound. Let every Christian tongue proclaim the joyful sound, the Comforter has come. The Comforter has come, the Comforter. Comforter is come, the Holy Ghost from heaven, the Father's promise give. Oh, spread the tidings round, wherever man is found, the Comforter has come on the last. Oh, boundless love divine, how shall this tongue of mine to wandering mortals tell? The matchless grace divine That I, a child of hell Should in his image shine The Comforter has come The Comforter has come The Comforter has come The Holy Ghost from heaven The Father's promise give Oh, spread the tidings round, wherever man is found, the Comforter has come. Amen. Good singing. You may be seated. Uh, gentlemen, if you will help me remember, all right, I'm telling all of you, so at least one of us may remember, after services, if we could help get some of this stuff out of the hallway, move back to the office, uh, that would be helpful, all right, and uh, uh, maybe. I gotta think that through too. I want to get the hallway uncluttered as soon as possible, but there may be uh, code base and stuff that we need to put down in the office before we do that. So maybe not. All right. So I thought of that as we're singing, and I didn't have a chance to think it all the way through. What's that? Oh, that's right. You guys, you guys did baseboard. That's right. I knew I had kept you around for a reason, brother CJ. Amen. So, <laughs> amen. So I take it all back again. I take back what I took back, and we're back on to put stuff back in the office. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, so help me remember that, just a couple of things. And uh, so, uh, yeah, hope, hope somebody's got a brain around here. Maybe it's not me, all right? So I just remembered 
like yesterday sitting there looking over going, oh, they put baseboard in here. And <laughs> but uh, anyway, all right. Yeah. Uh, this whole, they say that I saw last night, one of the side effects of COVID is like loss of like uh, cognitive stuff later on, you know? So maybe that's what's going on here. I don't know. What isn't a symptom of COVID though? That's the thing. Like everything is a symptom of COVID. COVID causes everything in the world. All right. So a couple of missions letters tonight and uh, we'll read these. Uh, uh, one, the first of which is from the Remigio family. Of course, they were with us back in early August. If you remember, uh, Brother Franz Remigio preaching, uh, he stands like this tall, though, behind this pulpit, I think, so, uh, but he's a good man, and uh, they're from the Bronx. They're starting a church in the Bronx. Dear supporters, I've asked my wife to contribute to this month's update letter as she and the ladies of the church recently attended an encouraging women's conference. What follows is a brief testimony from my wife, Sonia. For the fourth year in a row, our ladies were able to attend the annual ladies' conference at our sinning church in Astoria, uh, Queens. Open Door Bible Baptist Church. Uh, despite some changes to the conference because of the current virus situations, the ladies were not deterred in attending or participating. I was very blessed to see the great participa participation of those who went along, even a willingness to, involve, uh, to be involved in such activities as math, reading, and writing contests, as well as jump roping contests. Okay. That's, that's an interesting ladies conference, let me tell you, all right? <laughs> all in keeping with the school theme of Teach Me, Lord. Okay, so that's, there was a theme, all right? So they had some contests, math, reading, and writing, and jump roping, all right? Two of our ladies even came home with prizes. Uh, the topics covered in the four sessions were paths, purpose, protection, and patience. We thank the Lord uh, for the spiritual encouragement and fellowship. It was especially needed at such a time as this. In addition, Sunday, September 27th, was a desire come true for us. With the help of two other ladies, Gabby and uh, Marjorie, we were able to host a deaf fellowship after church. We prepared a lunch for them and enjoyed a more focused time of getting to know them. Our deaf Sunday school teacher, Brother John Rivera, has an enormous heart for the deaf, continues to reach out to his friends and students he teaches at his job. Including John and his wife, Linda, we have 10 deaf uh, summer sporadic attenders who have been attending on Sunday mornings. Another heartwarming event on the 27th was that John and Linda and their autistic son, Paul, signed a special uh, saying, it says sign, maybe it was autocorrect, uh, saying, it should say, sang a special for us on Sunday morning. They chose the hymn, Jesus Loves Even Me. Please continue praying for more interpreters. We have one young lady, Gabby, who asked Brother John to start teaching her sign language. She is having lessons with him twice a week. We have been so blessed by your prayers and support. These three and a half years of our church plan have been wonderful, even with all the ups and downs. Please continue to pray for this work in the Bronx, that God would help us reach more souls with the gospel, and many would be added to his kingdom. Brother Remigio. All right, so good to hear from Brother Remigio. And I know that they appreciate it. Got a nice thank you note from them to our church, uh, telling you all thank you for how you loved on them and, uh, and uh, blessed them while they were here back in early August. That was uh, while we were on vacation, and so um, that's a blessing. All right, so from the McCormick family, they're missionaries to Peru, October 2020. I think just a couple weeks ago we read their September letter, but he says this, uh, Rounding Third is the title of the letter. As my burning lungs draw in yet another breath, a single phrase plays over and over in my mind, almost there. My cleated foot connects with the corner of third base, and I can see it. I'm almost to home. While my baseball days may be well over uh, for now, well, behind me for now, I feel as if we have rounded third on our deputation travels. This month was full of exciting missions conferences and an abundance of opportunities from presenting on radio ministries and speaking in chapels to teaching in classes and children's churches. We may be rounding third on our deputation travels, but serving our Savior never gets old. I also wanted to take a special moment to say thank you to our partners in prayer. I know we as missionaries often talk about the financial support that is required to get to a field, but your prayer support is so vital and so appreciated. Thank you for praying for our ministry on deputation. Just this month, we had two saved during services and one who committed his life to foreign missions. Thank you for praying for our safety as we travel. Just last week, we had a man who appeared to be on drugs, drive his car next to us on the freeway, roll down his window and pull a gun on me. I know it was only because of the Lord's protection that my family did not become yet another statistics. 
a statistic. So th truly, thank you for praying for our safety. I know without a doubt the reason we are, we are where we are today, rounding third on deputation, is because of your prayers. So thank you. With just under 85 days until we board the plane for Peru, home plate is in sight. Before we slide into home, though, we would ask you to be in prayer for two specific requests. First, my ordination service is to be held on November 5th, 2020, p.m. Eastern Time. P please feel free to join us on Facebook Live or YouTube, Vision Baptist Church, Alpharetta, Georgia. We are praying that this service will be a special time of renewal and encouragement with family, friends, and mentors. Second, I would ask that you continue to pray until we uh, slide into home plate and leave for Peru, that the Lord would continue to give us opportunities to minister while here in the States. Your missionaries to Peru, Mitch, Jacqueline, Landon, and Ryan McCormick. All right, and so... Uh, what a blessing that is to see the McCormicks about to head to the field, and uh, uh, very, very exciting, all right? Um, and so continue to pray for them, pray for the Remigios down in the Bronx, ask God to uh, watch over them, all right? Take your Bibles with me to the night of the book of Philippians. <clears throat> Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, and we just want to do a character study tonight a little bit, just to... Um, a very uh, unique character in the Bible, a very special character in the Bible. <clears throat> Philippians chapter number 2. And we'll read verses 25 through 30. Philippians 2, 25 through 30. The Bible says this, Yet I supposed it necessary, this is Paul speaking, <clears throat> uh, and he's uh, writing to the church at Philippi, okay? Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick, nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him therefore the more carefully, that when ye see him again, ye may rejoice, that I may be the less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such in reputation, because for the work of Christ he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me. Epaphroditus. A soft-hearted, sacrificial servant. A soft-hearted, sacrificial servant. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your goodness and your grace. What an example we have before us tonight. Let us glean from your word. Let us ascribe, Lord, to be an Epaphroditus in this world. Uh, he's a soft-hearted, sacrificial servant, Lord. Um, we would describe people in this world and many in this world as hard-hearted and selfish and self-serving. And uh, that's what our world would tell us to be. That's what the devil would want us to be. That's the kind of mentality, Lord, that divides churches and destroys families and churches and homes. But Lord, we know that to be an Epaphroditus, Lord, would be a great help, a great cause, a great help to the cause of Christ, and a great uh, Lord encouragement to those around us. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord, tonight to learn from your Word in Jesus' name. Amen. So in this chapter, we find. Three men, just prior to our passage here, in verse number 25, it's talking about Timotheus, Timothy, uh, uh, Paul's apprentice in the ministry, Paul the author, uh, we got Timothy, and then we have Epaphroditus, three men whose lives were interwoven together. No doubt they were all close. We know that Paul was close to Timothy. We know that from this passage, he was very uh, close to Epaphroditus. All right, and uh, uh, just in the sense that he mentioned that if he were to pass away, or if he were to, uh, to, to, to uh, uh, not receive mercy from the Lord and be healed of this illness, Paul said, I would have had sorrow upon sorrow. It would have been devastating, wave upon wave of grief. Of grief. And so they got these three men here together, and we can take a look and see. Uh, just for a moment, kind of give yourself a test. Which one of these men do you most relate to? We got Paul, okay? And you may not feel like you can identify with Paul much at all, all right? He was a great statesman, of course, a great speaker, well-educated and, 
and uh, uh, a great speaker. Uh, when he got up to speak, people listened, and, and he was able to uh, talk, whether he was talking to the atheists on Mars Hill, or he was talking to Jews in Jerusalem. He was able to uh, uh, tailor the gospel and tailor the word of God to whichever audience he was with. Very great uh, orator and statesman. He was an apostle, an uh, apostle born out of due time, he said. A great missionary who started many churches. Uh, some would call him the, uh, the greatest church planner who ever lived. Who knows? And so uh, uh, we, we, we could bestow that title upon him. Wouldn't be inaccurate. You may look at Paul and go, I, I don't relate well with that. <laughs> I, that's Paul. I don't think I could ever be a Paul. Well, in the sense that he was an apostle, you never will be a Paul. Because all the apostles are gone and the apostolic era has has come and then gone. It has ceased, all right? Uh, regardless of what you may have been taught, all right? So if you've been taught, oh, we're still apostles today. If you see a church with, uh, you know, such something apostolic church, you go, oh, false doctrine, instantly, okay? And so uh, if you see uh, a church like that, because that's not uh, right doctrine, not rightly dividing the word of truth. Timothy, you might look at Timothy. He was gifted by God to preach and teach. He was Paul's apprentice and Pastored, uh, uh, pastored churches as well. He was called by God, set apart, a spiritual leader. He trained under the Apostle Paul. He was Paul's apprentice, uh, a, a great leader, a great teacher, a great pastor, and a gifted man. Uh, but that may you may go, that doesn't describe me either, Pastor. I'm not any of those things, or I'm not uh, 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 set apart to a full-time ministry and called to pastor churches and, and those kinds of things. And, and uh, uh, not many people are. Not everybody is, that's for sure. You might be saying, hey, give me somebody like me. Give me somebody I can relate to. And I believe that's why God prompted the Holy Spirit to, or the Holy Spirit prompted Paul, I should say, to write this section of Scripture about this man, Epaphroditus. He's not a statesman. He's not an apostle. We have no indication that he was even an elder, even in the church of Philippi, necessarily. There's nothing said to lead us to believe that his ministry was anything dramatic or dynamic, earth-shaking, unforgettable, as far as big doing big stuff like starting a whole church or, or doing something. I'm sorry, I need to stop this thing. I just saw it in the reflection of the window. Hold on just a second. Uh, let me... Pull this up. All right. Where's my uh, media booth guy when I need it? All right. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, where was I? Yeah, Epaphroditus. And there's nothing that that we see that he's done necessarily that was that was uh, uh, earth shaking. Okay. He's in a sense maybe you call him the hero of the common man. Just a basic guy. Just a guy in the church of Philippi. A servant in the church at Philippi. And maybe in that sense, his level, as we see in this passage here, his level of sacrificial service is all the more applicable to many of us. All right, because he provides for us what? We talked about having a pattern and how I would pattern my uh, basketball game after Michael Jordan, or try to at least. He provides for us a pattern of life at the level with which most of us face life. Maybe he was a businessman. Maybe he owned a shop in, in, in uh, the, the city of Philippi. Maybe he was a, a fast food worker. Who knows, all right? Uh, who knows what he did? But uh, just a regular guy. He, I guess you could say he exemplifies the spirit of sacrifice for the sake of Christ. It doesn't require a pat on the back. It doesn't require kudos and, and constant affirmation in order to keep serving the Lord. Can I tell you, to people like the Apostle Paul, that's refreshing. That's refreshing. He didn't have anything to gain. Not to, he wasn't going to be preeminent like an apostle. Be named with the apostles. Not as a great teacher, a preacher, proclaimer of truth. Maybe not even popularity like Timothy. As one who had been trained under the apostle Paul. I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty special. There's nothing really incomparable about Epaphroditus like there is about Paul. Maybe nothing preeminent about his giftedness, like you would say about Timothy, uniquely gifted of God. But Epaphroditus is one of us. One of us. Just, a, just, just like a, just a church member. Faithful. 
there, available, helpful. And in that sense, his model to us becomes all the more direct in his application, right? His model to you as a church member becomes all the more direct in his application. And not that a pastor can't learn from his example as well. Absolutely, we can. We could say that there, maybe there are a few Pauls, there are some Timothys, but there are many Epaphroditus. There are some, a few Pauls, some Timothys, but many Epaphroditus. And absolutely, this is the people's, the people's model. He was an ambassador. Who was this guy, Pastor? He was an ambassador from the church in Philippi to the Apostle Paul. As we read uh, this uh, passage, as it uh, says down in, uh, all the way in the last verse, it says, For the work of Christ he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life. What was he there to do? To supply your lack of service toward me. What you could not do from afar... He was there to do on your behalf. It would be like me being sent out. Uh, you know, Brother CJ is going down to Georgia. Now, this would never happen, but they would send me down there to help him build the building. <laughs> Don't laugh, Kevin Mark. All right? I don't want to hear yeah. that. Like, sent the wrong guy. All right. It'd be like him going, all right, Pastor, we can't all go, but we want you to go on our behalf. We can't all go, so we need you to go on our back. We're going to send you on a missions trip, and we want you to go and spend time with this missionary, helping them, encouraging them, and, and blessing them. This is a model for a missions trip. This is what Epaphroditus went on, was a missions trip. Now, we don't know how long he was with the Apostle Paul. We get the impression he was there more than just a, a week or two. It wasn't a 10-day little excursion. Like A lot of missions trips turn into sightseeing tours, all right? Nothing wrong with that per se, but he was there to bless the Apostle Paul. He was sent by the church in Philippi to him. He was in prison in Rome, but still had some freedom for ministry um, and to minister to his needs. So there are some things we can, uh, we can assume about Epaphroditus. First of all, we can assume he was a godly man, okay, with great character and integrity, okay? He could be trusted. Okay, he could be trusted. He was the kind of guy you give a job to and you know it's going to be get done. Any man, Proverbs says, can proclaim his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. He was a, he was a, 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 a godly man with character, faithfulness, integrity. The church wouldn't have chosen him to go. Uh, two, he had the heart of a servant. We see that from this passage. For him to go and just simply meet all the needs of the Apostle Paul would indicate he was certainly of the mindset of just coming alongside to serve. And might I add this in, it's not in my notes, but that he was probably pretty low ego. He didn't need a claim. He didn't need kudos. He didn't need a pat on the back. He just loved God and wanted to be a minister to God's servant. He wanted to go and be a blessing to God's servant, the Apostle Paul. The church wouldn't, wouldn't send someone who wasn't ready to give their life away in service. Ready to give of themselves. And we see that in the passage. We see he's courageous. He's ready to step into a hostile environment. I mean, he's helping the Apostle Paul where he's in prison. In Rome. Pagan, you know, pagan town central of the Roman Empire. I mean, just a, just a place full of wickedness and, and all kinds of things. And hostility toward anybody who believed what he believed. He might end up in chains next to Paul. For all he knew. The one he serves is hated. He's rejected. In this passage, he's become a sacrificial man who's left his home. Maybe even his job, his employment, his ministry, his church, his friends, his family even. If he had a family back home to go and serve. That's sacrifice right there. Sacrificial. Sacrificial. So, Pastor, how can I be an Epaphroditus? Well, we see some attributes of him. It says in verse 28, it's supposed it necessary to send you Epaphroditus, my brother. If you aren't saved, get saved. Amen? My brother. When Paul called him my brother, he meant not my, not my blood brother, but he, he, he's, he's my brother in Christ. He knew the Lord. It says, and companion in labor. Be willing to work. Be willing to work. Be willing to show up at work day. All right? All right, Epaphroditus was there for work day. Epaphroditus was there when there was work that needed to be done. 
Epaphroditus was willing to get his hands dirty. He was willing to do everything that the Apostle Paul was willing to do. Paul, I'm here to help you. I'm here to do the things maybe that I can do for you so that you can concentrate, Paul, on the things that only you can do. All right, kind of the mindset of a deacon, a servant, ready to, ready to pitch in and do whatever needed to be done to multiply Paul's time. Paul had things he needed to focus on. So Epaphroditus is probably going, here, Paul, it's lunchtime. Let me go and get the food. Let me go grab, see if I can scrounge up something for, for lunch. You just keep focusing on what you need to do or writing your letters or whatever it is you're doing. Paul, man, I know I see that wound's getting infected. Let me see if I can clean that up a little bit. Whatever you need me to do, Paul, that's what I'm here for. He was willing to work. My companion in labor, he worked alongside the Apostle Paul. This phrase is used 13 times in the New Testament. 12 out of the 13 times it's used by Paul. And he always used it of people that served alongside him and him in the ministry. Ready to do the work of the gospel. And can I just tell you, I bet that was sometimes helping him build tents. They had to get money to buy food and lodging and those kinds of things. If they didn't have support at the time from the churches that they had visited or the, the, the church at Antioch that had sent them out, uh, they had all these different things. All of this stuff constituted the work of the ministry to get things done in order to make ends meet. Do you have a willingness? A willingness. All right, I look at verse 30. For the work of Christ. He was nigh unto death. He was willing to die working for Christ. Willing to give his life in order to do the work. Say, Pastor, I'm not willing to risk my life to, to, to work for the church. I'm not willing to... You're not at any risk of your life to come work for the church. You might risk losing some sleep on a Saturday. Or a couple hours on a Tuesday or Thursday night to be a work day or whatever. And I'm not just talking about work day. I'm talking about uh, when, it, when it comes time and we're back to, to canvassing and handing out tracts and going door to door. That kind of stuff. Listen, are you willing to do it? Are you willing to sign up for the fair outreach when we do the soul winning booth? Are you willing to, to get there and, and say, I'm willing to... Epaphroditus is willing to die for the work of, the, of Christ. He was so sick, he was nigh unto death, Paul said. But he said, no, no, no. This is for Christ. I don't care how I feel. I don't care how sick I am. I'm going to get it done. He was willing to work as a companion in labor. For the work of Christ, he was nigh unto death. Not regarding his life. Not re he, he said, if I die, I die. <laughs> if I die, I die. Huh. Who said that in the Bible, remember? Esther. All the people that went and saw Esther at Sight and Sound last week, or two weeks ago, or whatever it was. Esther, Esther, Esther. I hear the whispers. Yes, if I perish, I perish, she said. I'm willing to do whatever I have to do. I'm willing to risk. Some of us won't even risk losing a little sleep to do something for the Lord. Some of us won't even risk getting a door slammed in our face to go out and tell somebody about Jesus. Some of us won't even resist somebody saying, or risk somebody saying, ah, no thank you, to our track. He was willing to risk his whole life. He didn't even regard his life. To help Paul in the ministry, to be a blessing to the man of God. What a blessing that is. I'm thankful as at Central Baptist, we have some folks here that are willing to be our companion in labor. Companions with each other in labor. Really willing to work. says that he was a fellow soldier. He was willing to fight the good fight. He was one of those guys from the book of Jude. He's willing to contend for the faith. That was earnest, earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. He wasn't a wimp that backed away from his convictions. He wasn't a wimp that backed away from what he believed. There's a lot of preachers even today that are changing their convictions. Changing things because it's easier than sticking with them and staying in the fight for what's right. Tell you what, we're going we're gonna to be soldiers for the cross here Amen. at Central Baptist Church. Amen? And there may come a time where we're literally having to stand and face persecution for what we believe. And I believe it's coming sooner uh, rather than later. It, it, it depends on, on what kind of uh, powers are running this country and that kind of thing. But uh, there will be retribution. Yep. 
The devil does not like what's gone on in our country the last four years. And some of the stands that our president has taken for Israel and for, for the unborn and some of these things. And we see the discrimination even against churches today. Even in, amongst our local authorities. They don't realize how they're being used by the devil to persecute churches. Outbreaks everywhere, but who are we going to drag through the mud? The church. Just drove by earlier. There was 50 kids standing there unmasked out in a lacrosse field, hanging out this far from each other. Everywhere. No outcry about that on Facebook. But a church, even if you're following all the protocols, oh, it's not essential though, right? Right? Well, we better be willing to fight the good fight of faith. Yeah. My fellow soldier, he called him. You might have to fight for some convictions in your life. You are going to have to fight. Epaphroditus is willing to fight. We don't go looking for fights. I saw a preacher one time, a guy, he got up and bragged about how he was a fighter. I'm a fighter. Jesus was a fighter. And he bragged about how he'd gone to a a door had gotten in a fight with somebody on the doorstep when he was trying to witness to him. And it was a ten year, my 10-year-old son was with me and we were ready to fight. I'm like, that's not what I was talking about. Okay? But we might have to fight and stand. Fight for our convictions. Fight for our religious freedom. Might have to stand with others who were doing the same thing. And then be willing to sacrifice. He says, but your messenger in that same verse. Be willing to sacrifice. He says he was your messenger. Epaphroditus gave up some things to serve the Lord. And whether you're joining me online tonight or here in person, boy, I hope you are willing to give up some things to serve the Lord. We want to serve God as long as it doesn't cost us anything. We want to serve God as long as it doesn't inconvenience our schedule. We want to serve God. And we think that our church is going to grow and things are going to get done here and people are going to be one to Christ and this cause is going to go forward as long as it doesn't cost me anything though, Pastor. Maybe, Pastor, I'll give toward the foundation offering, but you know, I'll give even extra toward that so that I don't have to come out on, on visitation when we start that back up. I'm going to start soon, by the way. You can't, out, you can't buy your way out of your responsibilities to the Lord. Well, I'll give to missions as long as I don't have to go witness to the, to the clerk at Walmart or give a track to the delivery guy when he comes by or whatever. I'll give my way out of my responsibility as a Christian. No, you just don't want to sacrifice anything. You don't want to sacrifice your comfort or, or that comfort zone. The, Epaphroditus was willing to leave his family, his job, drop everything and go to Paul. And suffer. Suffer greatly for the cause of Jesus. Are you flexible enough for God to have His way with you? Where do you draw the line? Pastor, I'm willing to sacrifice this much, but no more. I'm willing to, I'm willing to give financially, but don't ask me to give in my time. I'm willing to give of my time, but, but uh, I don't want to uh, con con contribute my, my talents to the Lord. I know I have those talents, but I don't want to use them for the Lord anymore. That's not what I want to do. He was willing to give everything. He was the messenger from the church of Philippi that dropped it all and went to Paul to be a blessing. It says he ministered to his wants and his needs. He was willing to serve. Willing to serve. Are you willing to serve anywhere? Are you willing to serve in any way? I can't wait to get in our new auditorium. I can't wait to free up all of our classrooms. No offense, homeschoolers over here. I can't wait to be able to use those again for, for, for kids' classes and, and uh, uh, start back up with, with Sunday school and those kinds of things. We're going to need people to work. We're going to need people to man the nursery again. Are you willing to serve? Well, I hope COVID hasn't made us lazy. I hope we haven't allowed COVID uh, to, 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 to allow us to get used to having church on the couch, those of you at home tonight. Well, this is just nice to have church from home. It's not church if you're at home. It's not the same. The word church means a called out assembly of baptized believers meeting together to observe the ordinances. A church is a gathering, a physical gathering 
It's ekklesia was, is the word that came from, the Greek word. And that means a gathering together, an assembly of people. I'm thankful for the technology. We've said it time and again, and I know that our folks at home know this as well as anybody. It's not the same. But you're going to have to, you're gonna have to sacrifice. You're going to have to serve. We're going to need people to serve. The last thing you need to do in order to be an Epaphroditus, not just be willing to sacrifice and willing to serve, but be more focused on people and relationships than on your program. Verse 26, For he, he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. Epaphroditus is however many miles away. He hears that the church at Philippi is, is worried for him and concerned for him, heavy-hearted for him. And that's weighing heavy on him. So what does Paul do? Paul does what he needed to do. We'll talk about that in a second. But these people he loved, that Epaphroditus loved so deeply, he doesn't want them to see them distressed. And that is so foreign to most of us, right? Paul said this, though. He said, I've got to send him, paraphrasing here. I have to send him because he's so distressed that you have heard about his difficulty and he wants to come eliminate your distress. He's heard. He's heartbroken. He was torn. He was ready to give his life. He says, not regarding his life. He wanted to work for Christ and do this work. But he's heard that his, the church back home is distressed and it's causing uh, stress on them and, and that. Listen, what a compassionate man. And what a compassionate man is Paul. We think of Paul as like, no, no, full steam ahead, ministry, and that's it. Paul could have said, look, Epaphroditus, get your act together. Suck it up, man. I know you're sick. Suck it up. But we've got to advance the kingdom here. We've got to advance the cause of Christ here. We've got to start more churches, and we want to get back out there and get more done. This is big stuff. Don't you know I am the apostle? I'm the apostle Paul, and this is the work of the living God. Come on, snap out of it. You can't be worried about how they feel about how you feel. <laughs> Did Paul say that? Of course not. No, Paul felt bad. Because Epaphroditus feels bad. Because the Philippians felt bad. <laughs> Everybody felt bad. So Paul says, listen, you've got to go home. Because they feel bad, you feel bad. And because you feel bad, I feel bad. Because they feel bad, I feel bad. So if you just go, they'll feel good, and you'll feel good. I'll feel good, and we can turn this whole thing around. <laughs> the only thing that happens is Paul doesn't have a companion anymore. Paul doesn't have his fellow soldier anymore. Paul didn't have his ser the servant there helping him anymore. Isn't it wonderful to know that some people in the ministry are compelled by relationships instead of programs, the needs of people instead of programs, there's still a place for that. There's absolutely a place for that. Where the needs of people come above our schedule. Are there people in your life that are more important than your program, than your schedule, than your itinerary? I've got to do this, 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 and this, and there's no time to stop or alter it to help anybody, to do anything for somebody. There's sometimes that you've got to stop and go, you know what, people are more important than my program. Setting something aside on my agenda to meet somebody's needs. Of course, God's mercy falls on Epaphroditus and Paul. He spares Epaphroditus, uh, who was very dear, again, to Paul. He said, verse 27, he'll have sorrow upon sorrow. That literally means, means wave upon wave of grief. Paul was so close to Epaphroditus. Think of them as, as just soulmates, like best friends, like companions. tells me that they spent some time together, not just a couple of days. But that Epaphroditus had sacrificed much for Paul. And that had endeared Paul to Epaphroditus. And it was more than just, just a casual friendship or just somebody you go, well, he's my buddy in the ministry or my friend over there. No, man, they were like blood brothers. Paul said, if I lose him, it's going to be sorrow upon sorrow. It would break my heart. It would tear me apart. And my, my pastor friend Park and Brother Gleb last week, I, I think of that. That's, that's really what Park is going with pastor of the church there. Brother Gleb, I was, I was friends with Brother Gleb, but not like his pastor was. He was an Epaphroditus to his pastor. And Park is experiencing sorrow upon sorrow right now. 
heartbroken that his Epaphroditus has gone to heaven. Glad that he's in heaven. Glad he's not suffering. But hurting because he's missing his Epaphroditus. We're not sure how long he's with them, but obviously he endeared himself. Epaphroditus was a risk taker. What have you risked for the Lord lately? What hobby have you risked for the Lord lately? What comfort have you risked for the Lord lately? What convenience have you laid on the line for the Lord? We really don't like risk, do we? We get saved and that eliminates eternal risk. We get we back into life and we... We, we want to risk, eliminate all the risk for, in life. We insulate ourselves and isolate ourselves. We get comfortable. Got all the money we need. Got, the, got the, the security alarm on the house. Got the fence. Got the gate. Got our life closed in. No risk whatsoever. Don't risk anything for God. Epaphroditus was a risk taker. And saying, look, I, I, I'm going to go and I'm going to serve the Lord. And, this is, and, and, and he nearly lost his life. And God, the Bible says God had mercy upon him. And maybe I'm drawn to Epaphroditus because I know in my heart, I have a hard time sacrificing for God. I know in my heart that it's sacrifice doesn't come easy for any of us. Risking things for God doesn't come easy for any of us. Epaphroditus' example was driven by his love for the Lord, his love for others. We'll finish tonight with this poem here. It says, Many sit at Jesus' table, Few will fast with him. When the sorrow cup of anguish trembles to the brim, few watch with him in the garden who have sung the hymn. Many will confess his wisdom, few embrace his shame. Many, while he smiles upon them, loud his praise proclaim. Then, if for a while he tests them, they desert his name. But the souls who love supremely, let, lo- let woe come or bliss, Those will count their dearest heart's blood, not their own, but his. Savior, thou who hast thus loved me, give me love like this. To risk it for the Lord. To stand for God. To not just play it safe all the time. Not live in a comfort zone all the time. Not financially just give the bare minimum, but say, God, I'm willing to sacrifice for you. Whatever it takes. Whatever you want from me with our time and giving of ourselves, with our own lives even, saying, Lord, I'm willing to lay my life on the line to be an Epaphroditus like Epaphroditus was. And of course, we see him going back to Philippi. I can imagine as he comes home, God has healed him of whatever he was ailing from. Nigh unto death, Paul said. God had mercy on him. Listen, I have a feeling that Epaphroditus would have said, hey, just like Brother Gleb did. One of the last texts that Park got from Brother Gleb was Brother Gleb had watched a a service from a Sunday night service and Pastor Park, I'll call him Pastor Park, had preached on heaven. And Brother Gleb had said, look, if, if worst case scenario is I get to go to the place you described last night, then I'm good. <laughs> that was one of the last texts that he got from him. I feel like Epaphroditus would have said the same thing, going, look, I can't lose. Like Amen. Paul, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. If I die of this illness, I died serving the Lord and giving my life for the work of Christ. And if I live... I get to go on living and doing more for the work of Christ. He was willing to give it all. Are you an Epaphrodite tonight? Are you a fellow soldier? Are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to serve? Are you willing to give of yourself? I sure hope so. Amen? Let's all stand together. I'll let Miss Debbie come. We'll play just a verse of invitation. I hope whether you're here in person or online with us tonight, I hope you've let God speak to your heart tonight and uh, trust that uh, He is working in lives. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Maybe you're here tonight and you go, Pastor, that's me. I, I, uh, the example of Epaphroditus has smitten me tonight. The example of Epaphroditus has, has convicted me tonight that I need to do more.
for the Lord. That I need to go farther for the Lord. I need to risk more for the Lord. I need to stand for the Lord. I need to go forward for the Lord. I need to be a fellow soldier or a companion in labor. I'm thankful. I'm the pastor of this church and I'm sure, sure grateful for the Epaphroditus we have around here. We've got some Epaphroditus in our church. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for all of you. I'm thankful for your willingness to serve. And many of you do it in different ways. There's different, different ways you go about it. There's different uh, uh, things you do that are such a blessing. I'm thankful for that. But I hope that tonight as you ponder these things from God's Word, that you'll purpose. Say, Lord, let me follow that example tonight. As I pray aloud, you pray silently right where you're at. If you want to kneel at your seat, that's fine. Or just give this time to the Lord. Lord, I thank you for all you've done for us. God, just uh, uh, we are humbled by this man Epaphroditus. We're, we're uh, struck down, Lord, I know I am, with, with embarrassment almost at the way he was willing to risk even his own life to serve you. He was willing to give it all. Forgive me, Lord, for the times I've held back from, I've held back far, far less than that for you. I've been unwilling to sacrifice far less than that for you, Lord. I've never had a moment where I thought I was going to have to give my actual physical life in your service. Not yet. And Lord, I, I, uh, I've, I've been stingy with my time and my talents and my treasure at times. Forgive me, Lord, for that. Would you help us, Lord, to follow this example of Epaphroditus? Thank you for all you've done in our church, all you continue to do. Help us to continue to grow. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much, Miss Debbie. Appreciate that. And uh, thank you very much for being here tonight. I will send out a text, guys. I'm not sure. I'll have to get with some of you, figure out when the best time for the next work day is, work night, work day. And I uh, hope that you will plan to be there, all right, and uh, as best you can. All right, and don't forget the offering box on the table out there. And uh, I told somebody earlier today we missed two Sundays, so we should have triple offerings today, right? Yeah. All right, I'd triple it up. All right, and so uh, I know some folks have given online, some folks have uh, given uh, by mailing it in, that kind of stuff. So that's fine. I just uh, trust that the Lord will uh, work in a great way this next Sunday, and we'll be able to see that goal met and uh, be able to get the last, some of the loose ends tied up out here and get into the auditorium, all right? Exciting, exciting times, all right? And uh, provided our sound system's in there, I promise you, promise you, we'll be in by Thanksgiving, okay? All right, so, uh, and uh, I know, everybody's looking at me like, don't say that, Pastor. <laughs> provided the sound system's in there, that's the really the last major thing that's absolutely uh, deal breaker can't do without. So uh, for for several reasons uh, with our streaming and with other other things like that, which we could go without that. But uh, the ability to hear me speak is kind of important. Well, my wife wouldn't say that, but uh, uh, but uh, in the church setting, it's kind of important to hear the word of God. So <coughs> let's just uh, let's be an Epaphroditus this week purpose in our heart. Chew on that for a little while. Amen. My grandpa used to get up and read the Bible every Sunday. Every Sunday morning he'd get up and read a passage in church as I was a kid. And when he came to the word Selah, he would he would uh, he would say, you know what that means? How do you like them apples? <laughs> and so in other words, take that and uh, chew on that for a little while. All right. So I think Epaphroditus is a great example for all of us. Amen. We've already prayed. You are dismissed. Have a great night. Get around. If you're not going to be here Wednesday, make sure you tell Brother CJ, Brother Hunter, thank you and wish them well. Yes. See? And we need help moving stuff in the hallway, guys. Back to the office if we can get some help out there. Let me turn the mic up so everybody hears me. If we could get help moving that stuff in the hallway, that'd be a blessing. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's such a blessing. Kyle, if you can head up getting the copier transferred back on top of that cabinet once it gets in there. You don't have to do it all, but make sure it's all hooked up right since you know how to do that. So.